You walk into a city where the street lights turn on just as you approach them. The traffic lights know exactly when you're coming and your phone tells you which coffee shop has the shortest line before you even think about wanting coffee. Sounds pretty cool, right? But then you realize that same city knows where you are every second of the day, what you buy, who you talk to, and maybe even what you're thinking about buying tomorrow. Welcome to the world of smart cities, where technology promises to make everything better, but might also be watching your every move. Today, I'll explain smart cities to you like you're five years old, and by the end of this, you'll understand whether these super connected places are the coolest thing ever, or something that might make you want to hide under a blanket. Imagine your city is like a giant robot that can see, hear, and think. But instead of having big metal arms and legs, this robot is made up of thousands and thousands of tiny electronic helpers scattered everywhere. These helpers are called sensors, and they're like the robot's eyes and ears. Some sensors can see how many cars are on the road, others can hear how loud the noise is, some can even smell if the air is clean or dirty. All of these tiny helpers are constantly watching and listening and smelling, then telling the city's big computer brain what's happening everywhere all the time. The city's computer brain is like having a super smart friend who never sleeps and remembers absolutely everything. This computer friend takes all the information from the tiny sensor helpers and tries to figure out how to make the city work better. If the sensors say that there's too much traffic on one street, the computer brain might change the traffic lights to help cars flow better. If the sensors notice that a lot of people are walking in the park, the computer brain might turn on more street lights to keep everyone safe. It's kind of like having a really, really good babysitter for an entire city. But here's where it gets tricky. To be smart, the city needs to know a lot about you. And I mean, a lot. When you walk down the street, cameras can see your face and remember that you were there. When you use your phone, the city can tell where you are. And when you buy something with your credit card, the city knows what you bought and when you bought it. When you ride the bus or subway, the city knows where you got on and where you got off. It's like having someone follow you around all day with a notebook, writing down everything that you do. Except it's not just one person with one notebook. It is thousands of electronic helpers with thousands of electronic notebooks and they never forget anything. Now the people who build these smart cities say that it's all for good reasons. They want to help you. If there's an emergency like a fire or someone needs your help, the city can find you quickly and send help right away. If you're trying to get somewhere and there's a big traffic jam, the city can tell your phone about a faster way to go. If the air is getting dirty in one part of town, the city can warn people to stay inside or maybe turn on some big air cleaners. If there's not enough electricity in one neighborhood, the city can borrow some from another neighborhood that has extra. It's like having a super helpful friend who always knows exactly what you need and when you need it. Smart cities can also save a lot of money, which is good for the planet. The city's computer brain can turn off lights in empty buildings, make sure air conditioning isn't running when nobody's around, and even help cars find parking spots quickly so they don't drive around and waste gas. The computer brain can watch how much water people are using and make sure that none of it gets wasted. It can even predict when something might break, like a water pipe or a street light, and fix it before it actually breaks. I mean, that's pretty amazing, right? But some people are worried about all this watching and knowing. They think it's like living in a house where someone is always peeking through your windows and writing down everything you do. Even if that person says they're just trying to help you, it might make you feel uncomfortable. You might not want anyone to know that you went to the ice cream shop three times this week, or that you like to sit in the park and read books, or that you visit your grandmother every Tuesday. Some things are simply private, and you should get to choose who knows about them. There's also the question of what happens to all that information about you. The city's computer brain remembers everything after all, but who else gets to see those memories? What if someone bad gets access to the computer brain and finds out where you live, where you work, and when you're not home? What if the government decides that they don't like something you're doing and uses all that information to get you in trouble? What if companies want to buy information about you so they can try to sell you things you don't want? It's like having a diary that someone else gets to read, and you can't control who that someone else might be. Some smart cities have already caused problems. I mean, in some places, the government uses all those cameras and sensors to watch people who disagree with them. If someone goes to a protest and says something the government doesn't like, the smart city can track them down and punish them. That is not using technology to help people. That's using it to control them. It's like having a teacher who doesn't just watch to make sure that you're safe, but also writes down every time you whisper to your friend or make a funny face, and then gets you in trouble for it later. Even when smart cities are trying to be helpful, they sometimes make mistakes. The computer brain might think that someone is doing something bad and they're actually just doing something unusual. Maybe you like to take long walks at night, or you visit lots of different neighborhoods, or you have a job that requires you to travel to strange places. 
The computer brain might think this is suspicious and alert the police, even though you're not doing anything wrong. It's like having a very nervous babysitter who calls your parents every time you do something they don't understand. There's also the problem of what happens when the technology breaks. If your city depends on all these electronic helpers and computer brains to work properly, what happens when they stop working? What if there's a power outage or someone hacks into the system or the computer brain just gets confused? Suddenly, traffic lights might not work, emergency services might not know where to go, and nobody might know how to fix anything because they've gotten so used to letting the computer brain handle everything. It's like if your really helpful friend suddenly just disappeared and you realized that you'd forgotten how to do things yourself. The people who live in smart cities also don't always get to choose how much the city watches them. If you live there, you have to accept that the city's electronic helpers are going to see and hear and remember everything you do. You can't really opt out or ask for privacy without moving somewhere else entirely. It's like being forced to live in a house with windows that you can't put curtains on, where everyone can see inside all the time. But it's not all scary. Many smart cities are trying to find ways to be helpful without being creepy. They're working on systems that can improve traffic and save energy without storing information about individual people. They're making rules about who can access the information and how it can be used. They're asking the people who live in the cities what they want and what makes them comfortable. Some cities are even letting people vote on which smart technologies they want and which ones they don't want. It's like having a helpful friend who asks permission before they help you and respects it when you say no. The key, though, is finding the right balance. I mean, nobody wants to live in a city that's falling apart, where the traffic is terrible, the air is dirty, and it takes forever for help to arrive in an emergency. But nobody wants to live in a city that knows everything about them and might use that information in ways they don't like. The best smart cities are probably the ones that use technology to solve big problems like pollution and traffic, while still respecting people's privacy and giving them choices about how much they want to share. Some cities are experimenting with something called privacy by design. This means they build their smart systems in ways that help the city work better without collecting personal information about individuals. For example, instead of tracking exactly where you go, the system might just count how many people are in different areas without caring who those people are. Instead of recording your face, cameras might just detect that a person is there without identifying which person it is. It's like having a helpful friend who can see that someone needs help without needing to know exactly who that someone is. Other cities are being very transparent about what information they collect and how they use it. They publish reports showing what their sensors are watching, what their computer brains are learning, and what they do with all that information. They let people see the data about their own neighborhood and even contribute their own observations. It's like having a helpful friend who shows you their notebook and explains why they wrote down what they wrote down. The future of smart cities probably depends though on how well we can solve these privacy and control problems. I mean, if we can figure out how to make cities smarter without making people feel watched and controlled, then smart cities could be amazing places to live. But if we can't solve those problems, then smart cities might become places that people want to escape from. So, let's recap this whole high-tech adventure. Smart cities are like giant robots made of thousands of tiny electronic helpers that watch and listen to everything, then tell a big computer brain how to make the city work better. This can solve lots of problems like traffic jams, dirty air, and wasted energy. But it also means the cities know everything about everyone who lives there. Some people think this is great because it makes life easier and safer. Other people think it's scary because they don't want to be watched all the time. The best smart cities are probably the ones that help solve big problems while still respecting people's privacy and giving them choices. Now go forth and decide whether you want to live in the future or hide from it. Either way, the robots are probably coming whether we like it or not.